This video is made possible by Gerald Subaru. You know Subaru makes fantastic cars, and Gerald Subaru in Naperville matches those vehicles with fantastic service as well. Visit GeraldSubaruNaperville.com to start your new car search today. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 2021 Subaru Ascent Limited. Up front is a 2.4 liter turbocharged flat four, and down below is a CVT. Now, I'm excited to be driving the Ascent because I drove a 2019 Ascent back in 2019. I really liked it, you really liked it, but I messed up the audio in that video, and so I've always been looking for another Ascent to film because I wanna do this car justice. This is a great car, and it only gets better with 2021. So let's get back to that 2.4 liter flat four. Well, it is turbocharged. It makes a good amount of power. I'll put it up on the screen. Nothing really too crazy. However, what I love about this engine is that Subaru is doing the same thing that Mazda's doing. And I'm not sure which manufacturer did it first, but I'm happy that both of them are doing it. And what they're doing is both manufacturers designed a turbo four cylinder for their big SUV. The Ascent is Subaru's big SUV and the CX-9 is Mazda's big SUV, which I'll be reviewing in a couple of days here on the channel. Once this engine, the 2.4 liter flat four turbo proved itself in the Ascent, then they put it in the Legacy. It's great. Then they put it into the Outback. It's great. And rumor has it, that it might be the new STI engine with a couple of bits added to it. But basically they took a great engine, they tried it out in their largest SUV, and then it started trickling its way down the totem pole. And yes, the 2.4 flat four turbo in the Ascent was designed for the Ascent, but because it had such great success, it worked its way into other models, which I think is brilliant. I think it's a brilliant engine. I think it's really solid. It makes great power. And you might be saying to yourself, that big SUV has a four cylinder? Yeah, it does. It's pretty good. Now, in terms of miles per gallon, this gets 20 in the city, 26 on the highway. Kilometers per liter will be at the top of the screen for those of you abroad. But what's interesting is that according to Subaru's website, the lower two trim levels, so the base model and the premium, get 21 in the city, 27 on the highway. This, the limited and the touring models, the higher trims, actually get one mile per gallon less in each category, both city and highway. I find that very interesting. So if you absolutely want to push miles per gallon in your ascent, get a base model or a premium. The limited and touring, a little bit heavier. They have a lot more options and thus it gets worse fuel economy. All right, we're warmed up. Out on the test track, don't believe I have a sport mode. I'm not gonna do paddle shifters because I'm a grown man. Here's the thing, it's not fast, it's not quick, it's not, you know, it's not a sports car. However, it feels, interestingly enough, it feels almost on par, not torque wise, but power wise and acceleration wise, it feels on par with the 2021 Tahoe, and that's a 5.3 liter gas guzzling V8. This is a four cylinder turbo, and it feels very, very similar. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Like I said, Paraduit is a CVT transmission. CVT obviously means continuously variable transmission. There's no set gears. Subaru does this for all of their automatic vehicles. They're all CVTs. I'm not a big fan of CVTs. However, Subaru does the best CVTs in my opinion. It's like when my girlfriend wants to go to Panera Bread or St. Louis Bread Company for those of you in Missouri. I don't like Panera Bread. I don't like it as a restaurant. However, when I do go, the broccoli and cheddar soup is the best thing that they have. So while I don't seek out a CVT, Subaru makes the best CVTs. That's just my own personal opinion. Last but not least about the drivetrain, of course the Ascent is all wheel drive and this thing absolutely rocks off road. I had the opportunity to watch one a year or so ago and wow, it was, it was absolutely great. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two main gauges. On the left is my tachometer along with coolant temperature and on the right, I have my speedometer and fuel. And in the center, I get the pretty typical Subaru digital display. I like this a lot. It does the new Subaru thing of whenever I hit the brakes, the little ascent on the screen hits the brakes as well. 
very smart there. I can see my average MPG, my miles till empty, my radar cruise options. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I'll pull over here. We could cycle through a couple different things. So right now I'm looking at my tire pressure, miles per hour and digits, running hours, running distance, how long I've been driving, current MPG, miles till empty, and then average MPG, we're back to the beginning. I like that a lot. On the steering wheel, on the left, we have our volume options, track change, source, voice commands, phone options, as well as to the bottom left, we have the information buttons that just cycles through the different screens in the gauge cluster. Then on the right, I have all my radar cruise control options. So this is fitted with Subaru's EyeSight system, which is radar cruise control, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alerts, all sort of rolled into one name. I love the EyeSight program. I think it works really, really well for a vehicle like this. And word on the street is that EyeSight is only getting better and better, which is absolutely amazing. And as someone who recently bought a car with radar cruise control, I can humbly say that radar cruise control might be one of the best inventions ever. Makes road trips so easy. Before we get away from the steering wheel, one thing about the steering itself is the actual steering of the Ascent is very, very light. Now I'm gonna say this slowly because I don't want this to be taken out of proportion. The steering of the 2021 Subaru Ascent in weight feels similar to my 1993 Mazda Miata, similar. It's very, very light. I can one finger turn this car around. It's so easy to drive. It makes the vehicle feel smaller in driving feel than it really is and that's big for this big SUV, that means a lot. To the bottom right of the steering wheel, I do have my heated steering wheel button, which is very, very nice, part of the limited package. As well as I do have paddle shifters on the back. This has a CVT, so they're kind of fake. But to the left of me, I have a bunch of different buttons. I have my tailgate button, dome light, tailgate memory. So if you have a taller garage or you live in a parking structure, things like that, you can actually set a memory so then the tailgate doesn't go up and whatever's up there. Traction control off and blind spot monitoring on and off as well as my gauge dimmer switch. On the door, I do have my memory seat options, very nice. Power mirrors, power locks, and power windows, the front two of which being auto. Now getting into the center, this is one of my favorite parts of the ascent and it's the little information screen I get up above. Right now it's showing me everything that eyesight is monitoring. I love this, this is sort of like Jarvis from Iron Man, I, I could see what is sort of going on. However, I can scroll through some other pages. I can actually look at my pitch, as well as what wheels are getting power and my steering angle all in one screen. This is fantastic for off-roading. If you're stuck in the mud, you really don't know which way your wheels are pointing and this little system will tell you. Absolutely brilliant. It'll also tell you how many degrees your vehicle is up or down. Absolutely amazing. Next page is Percentage of acceleration. I'm accelerating with 9% throttle right now. Instant fuel economy, as well as my average speed. Next is my weather report. It's telling me that in six hours today, it might rain, and honestly, I think it's right. Navigation, which direction I'm pointing to, and which road I am on. Then I have my music. I have my fuel options, so this is like my MPG, distance till empty things like that. Then I just have a nice little analog clock with the date and which day of the week it is. Then I have my settings and we're back to eyesight. This is amazing, amazing information. It, it makes me feel like these are like Forza Motorsport 7 like digital gauge. I like it, It's so cool. I feel like I have an onboard data system, like a race car. It's so, so unique. It's so great. I love all the information that they give you. I don't think a car can possibly give you too much information about itself. And this is, this is getting close. This is a lot of information and I absolutely love that. Now, down below that little readout, which is just for information about the vehicle, I love that it's separate. We have the enter up and down button. So that is for cycling through those pages on that screen I just talked about. Then I have my hazard switch and of course my airbags, which interestingly enough, I have unbuckled lights for every seat in the ascent. This is awesome. This is really, really cool. It can tell if people are sitting in the seat and unbuckled. It has an individual light, even for the third row. I don't know if I've seen this for a third row vehicle. That is very, very impressive. 
Then we have the actual screen itself. This is obviously for your radio. We can go home here, map, my Subaru settings. Of course, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Very tactile. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than in some of the other Subaru vehicles. However, I don't mind it. I think it's great. I think it works. It's colorful, it's intuitive. That's all I can ask for. Then of course we have the buttons for that center screen. We have like home and radio, media, tune, scroll, volume, things like that. Then we have the climate controls. I love this as well. I think the digital readout works really, really well. It looks great. I do have dual zone climate, and then I do have heated seats as well. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I do have heated seats, which is very, very nice. Then down on the center console itself, we have X mode, which is an off-road mode. This will help aid you off-road, as well as it triggers the off-road display up at the top that we talked about earlier. Very, very nice. Then we have the AVH button. This is pretty much your brake hold, so you hit this, and when you come to a stop, you hit the brakes a little bit extra hard, then you can take your foot off the brake, and the vehicle will hold itself there. This is super nice for drive-throughs, for stop-and-go traffic. When you're just tired, you don't wanna hold your foot there. Just use the brake hold. Absolutely amazing, I have it in my personal car, and it's, again, one of the best things to ever come to cars in the 21st century. To the right of that, I have my aux, and then I have two USB 2.1 amp outlets. Love that. Then we have the shifter itself. The shifter's mounted really down low. It's sort of in an awkward spot, at least for me. However, it's an automatic. Doesn't matter where the shifter is. You can put it on the ceiling if you want. I'm not gonna touch it again. To the right of the shifter, I do have two cup holders, which have nice little lights in them. I like that nice little touch from Subaru. Then I have my power parking brake at the bottom of that. Now, the seats are nice and comfortable. They are perforated leather. They are heated. They are memory. Very, very nice. I am feeling very comfortable. But speaking of seats, we have two more rows. This is Subaru's three row SUV. So we'll do some back seat reviews. All right, so we're in the second row of the 2021 Subaru Ascent. First of all, the first thing I want to note back here is that right now the Limited comes with the two captain's chairs. So as you can see, there's like a little aisle in between and I get these nice full chairs. However, you can get a Subaru Ascent with a bench seat back here. So right now this vehicle seats seven, two, two, and three but you can get a bench seat, so it'll be two, three, and three, so you can actually seat eight people, eight seat belts, as opposed to seven found here in the Limited. So if you're on the fence, you're like, oh, I wish it had a bench seat, you can get a bench seat. Want to get that out very early on. However, seats are very comfortable. They are heated seats. The second row gets heated seats. I have my own climate controls down here with a nice digital readout. I have two 2.1 amp outlets, as well as fold down cup holders. I like the nice captain's chairs. I'm 5'11". I got probably about inch and a half, two inches of headroom. I feel like a true adult back here. My knees don't have a prayer of hitting the front seat. However, these seats are actually on rails, so I can scoot all the way <laughs> up if I would like to give the person behind me more leg room. And so right now, the second row of the ascent, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. But let's see how it holds up with the third row. All right, so now we are in the third row of the 2021 Subaru Ascent, and it now totally just clicked with me. I totally forgot about this. On the window here, it actually says built in Indiana. I actually recently went to the exact factory where this Subaru Ascent was built. So it's built actually right here in Indiana. Well, over the border in Indiana. We're in Illinois, Indiana. If you're not from the Midwest, same thing. But I actually fit back here with this seat giving tons of legroom up there. I fit back here, this is amazing. This is why you buy a full size SUV. Like I said with acceleration, this really rivals the Tahoe. And you save $30,000, $30,000, that's insane. No, but really back here, very comfortable. I can sit, I mean, I, I, I can sit back here. The adjective small has never been associated with me or my name. And I fit back here. I have speakers on either side. I have two USB chargers, 2.1 amp, back here. So if you have people back here, they can charge their phones too. You don't have to go to Payless and buy one of those 10 foot charging cables. It's just obnoxious. You don't need that. They can charge it back here. Now, if there was a third person back here, it would get pretty tight, but six people can actually fit in here very, very comfortably. And that's hard to find besides from a panel van. Really, really impressive back seats. I thought this was going to be the downfall of the Ascent. I thought that it was gonna be, wow, great up there, but once you get back here, you might as well be in jail. It's not the case. 
I wouldn't be happy if I was demoted to the third row on a road trip, but it's doable. The ascent just keeps ticking the right boxes, man. So it's way too windy to talk about the back while actually recording, so I'm doing it now. I like the back. Obviously, the third row takes up a lot of space, but I do have an outlet back there. That is my one ask from SUVs is to have an outlet, 12-volt outlet in the back, and the ascent has it. I also do have a very nice Harman Kardon speaker behind the last row, so at least they'll still get some good, nice bass sound as well. Not great in storage. However, if you fold down the rear seats, then of course it is, but it's a three-row SUV, so it's to be expected. I forgot to mention it, but the limited ascent comes with Harman Kardon speakers. Great! Love Harman Kardon. I have them in my room. BMW's been using Harman Kardon for years. Last thing about the interior is the big moon roof. Absolutely love it. I think it adds really great light to the interior. As a more adventurous vehicle, I think a moon roof is a must. You know, it really reminds me of like Land Rover Discoveries and vehicles of that sort. I want to go on a safari in the Ascent. Now we have to talk about the looks. Now the looks of the Ascent, I don't think it's a stone cold killer. I don't think it's going to win many awards for its design. However, it's a proper good looking SUV. I don't look at it, I'm not repulsed. I also don't fall in love immediately. I do think it looks good. You know, it, it's like when your friend shows you newborn pictures and you're like, ah, oh, he's cute. I mean, he's, he's a cute kid, but you know, not winning any contests, let's be honest here. And so let's talk about the Ascent as a whole, as a vehicle, as something you might want to consider purchasing. And again, I have to bring back what I said about the, the Subaru Outback that I drove, which is this car was provided to me by Gerald Subaru in Naperville. Yes, they gave me this car, but I have to be clear that they are not paying me. There's no money that exchanges hands when I review cars keeps me honest, keeps me unbiased, and it makes me want to produce the best review I can because I make the money off of YouTube's ads and not the dealerships themselves. I feel like I have to say that because I really cannot find a flaw here with the Ascent. I'm honestly sitting here looking around the cabin. I'm trying to figure out something I don't like, something that I couldn't live with, something to just make me say, ah, yeah, no, never mind. But honestly, I, I, I can't find whatever that would be. What do you want me to say? There's nothing wrong with this. I, I don't have anything bad to say. And I normally try to balance everything out, to keep everything in proportion so I don't oogle over one car and destroy another, but I'm oogling and I can't find a reason not to. The Subaru Ascent is the best full-size SUV I've driven this year. The Tahoe that I drove had more features. However, it was nearly $75,000. This right now is $45,000. And so I will take a handful less features for nearly a $30,000 discount. That's it. I can't find anything wrong with this. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Gerald Subaru in Naperville for letting me take out their Subaru Ascent. Like I said, this thing is absolutely, this is a batting a thousand with the Ascent. I absolutely love it and I'm glad I, they gave me the opportunity not only to drive it, but I could sort of redeem it because the first time I reviewed it, my audio was terrible and I wasn't happy with it. But now, I think I gave it a proper, proper send off. And that's all thanks to Gerald Subaru. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe. I really like to take care, guys.